guys, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking all about some of my favourite plants this month. I have quite a mix of different plants and I've chosen a very strange number because I've decided to do eight just for no reason except that these were the true group of favourites this month. So the first plant I have is a cactus. Oh, <laughs> it's a cactus. It's a mammalaria and the reason that this has been a favourite this month is because of the blooms, which are so beautiful. It's been blooming for me for quite a while now, but this is the first time I've had like a big row of the blooms together and they're so cute and pink and just precious. And I really am just loving it. Like this is a plant that hasn't done much. Um, I had it as a Christmas present a few years ago and it's not grown. Um, so it was nice to see that it is still doing stuff inside there. And it's in this lovely pot that I got from C Secret Santa at my old work, thank you Jay, which I think really, really is a nice combination with this plant and luckily the nursery part I got it in, I can still size it up again and fit it in to this pot. One thing I really like about this species of cactus is the orangey spikes. I think before you've seen me talk about my euphorbia with the really bright red spikes, like that is a trait of cacti that I really look for. And this is such an easy care plant. It just sits in the bright direct sun in the south facing windowsill and I water it like once every one to two months, depending on what time of year it is. I barely ever fertilize it and maybe do it like twice a year. Um, and yeah, it's just been super easy. I don't know what, I think I've got some soil at the bottom of the pot that's making that weird noise. Next, I have a very big plant and it is my Anthurium crystallinum. So beautiful. You can never tell from a distance, but the veins have a really nice silvery sparkliness to them, like the silver blush, but just not as pronounced. The main reason this has been a favourite this month, because let's face it, this plant is always a favourite, uh, is I finally got a new leaf. It's never put out a new leaf the whole time that I've had it. It's had a couple of like caterpillars. This one looks like it kind of dried. Oh no, actually. Yeah, no, it does have a couple where it's got one on this because there's technically like this is a smaller plant in there and that's got a caterpillar as well. But I'm so excited to see how big this leaf is going to be and to get this plant even bigger. And to be honest, I may have to reconsider where it lives at this point because um, it's going to be getting a, a bit big for the area. But this plant has beautiful velvety leaves. It just lives in a really chunky mix. It doesn't seem to require as much water as my other anthuriums. I feel like in my experience, the larger an anthurium is, the less water it seems to need. Uh, I guess that depends on the potting situation as well, because if it was really root bound, uh, that would not be the case. But generally, I don't have to water my large anthuriums as much as the smaller ones. The main thing with anthuriums, if you ever decide to get this kind of plant, is they can be prone to fungal infections. This one's had one before, and you can see where I've treated it and it's dried up. A lot of them can be grown at normal room humidity, but also you can have some problems with the edges of leaves drying out. I've seen a lot of people have that issue with forgetii. The one thing that can be a bit annoying is that she gets dusty leaves very easily and it's very hard to clean, isn't that right? If you're not new to this channel or you follow me on Instagram, you may already know that she is called Nelly and I don't name all of my plants, but I think she deserves it really because she is so majestic. Nelly. I feel like anthuriums had a really big boom during lockdown and then people kind of got over it but I just didn't get over it. I just I'll never be over it. So I really enjoyed staring at her. I plan to stare at her a lot longer for the rest of the month and probably the rest of time really. Then I have a plant that was one of my wishlist plants that I got this year and it's Philodendron Campi Lunette. And oh, I just think that she's so beautiful. I feel like I just made the exact same noise that I made when I talked about this plant last. The parallel venation is just stunning. I was really disappointed with myself because before it was getting a new leaf and I like absolutely, I can't believe I've done this more than once, um, but I tripped over, kicked the watering can and I kicked it into this plant and it went 
onto the new unfurling leaf and then it did that thing where it goes like brown and rotty from getting too wet. So I was really sad, so I had to cut it off. And then I got this bad boy that is like longer than my forearm and I am just so obsessed. And then straight after this had unfurled, I got this new growth point, but I'm so excited. This plant's getting quite big already. I'm so, so excited to get some more lovely big leaves like this. I've been fertilizing uh, with every watering and I've just upped the fertilizer for this plant because I felt like it got to the point where it really kicked into gear and I wanted to give it a bit of an extra boost to what I'd been fertilizing with at the moment. Because if you've never fertilized a plant before, you should always start off on a lower concentration than what it says on the instructions and build it up gradually. Because if you don't, it can shock the plant, cause issues, burn the roots and stuff stuff like that. I love the way, I feel like it looks like wings, it looks like my wings right now. I love the way that this plant grows. I think they all look amazing as it fans out. I've seen some really big ones before in person that looked just chef's kiss and the leaves are really really glossy it's more of a compact climber than other philodendrons you can see that the nodes are really close together which can make it more difficult to propagate so if you're looking for philodendrons that you're going to be able to propagate a lot like this is probably not that plant but if you want a beautiful symmetrical visually satisfying plant that is an easy growing aeroid compared to other philodendrons and lives in my normal room humidity. But I will say that my normal room humidity may be different to yours. It's about like 68 at the moment. In winter, obviously it's a bit lower because we've got the heating on because we're in England. Wow, I just love this leaf. And I did notice that it did have a tiny, the tiniest bit of damage um, from it unfailing. You can't even see it on the top when I'm trying to show you, but really it's so not noticeable. And to, as far as I'm concerned, this is like a perfect leaf. I'm so in love. And this is why I love this time of year. Because the reason I hate this time of year is because hay fever. But the reason that I love it is because plants are so happy and all my philodendrons start to grow really, really quickly and I just get consecutive leaves and it's great. I really, really recommend this one. I feel like not that many people are bothered about these, but they're just so, oh, I love them. I love them so much. This pot must have been a nursery pot from when I first got into plants because I reuse all my pots. And I used to label them at the beginning and I've got philodendron birkin <laughs> still masking taped on this pot. That's pretty funny. This is in a chunky mix again, uh, and it's the same thing really that I was saying with my anthurians, but to be honest, uh, philodendrons do require more water in my opinion than anthuriums. You can't really say like, this plant requires this much amount of water because the best way is just to keep checking on it. For example, at the moment, like I'm studying right now, I am boiling, I'm so <laughs> Uh, in my uh, greenhouse and stuff upstairs, it's been getting like 25 degrees. There's sometimes when it's been getting to 28 and I'm like, no, no, too hot in there. And everything's just dries out much faster. So I've gone from in spring having to water my philodendrons ish once a week, but obviously some plants are thirstier than others that I've just got to know them over time, what they like. Uh, but I have had to water some of my philodendrons every two days at the moment because of how hot it's been. And that is just weird to me as a person in England who's used to it being cold. This plant is technically still in the, the rooting phase and I have three of them. But this is my favorite one. And it's because it reminds me of my dog Milo's tail. Like it looks just like his little curly tail. So this is a monkey tail cactus. It's such a cool plant. I love trailing cacti. And these grow in such a cool way. They can end up growing more from the base and from the tips in like this segmented form. And it's a very fuzzy cactus, but it is still spiky. Underneath the fuzz is deceptive. So you can like, you can touch it gently, but if you squish it, it will still like spike your fingers. And these bloom so beautifully. I think the blooms are like a hot pink. And I had wanted one of these for ages, but for some reason they seem very, well, they seemed 
very difficult to find in England. And then I saw a private seller in one of the Facebook plant groups uh, selling some and they were grafted. And I've actually been making a video at the moment at the whole process that I've gone through from removing it from the graft, rooting it, etc. So when I fully finished the process, I will be making that into a separate video. And I'm really excited because at first I was quite concerned that when I made the decision to root them, I just thought, gosh, what if this doesn't work? And I've just like cut up the, the cactus, but it seems to be working very, oh, I can actually see, I can actually see your root visibly through the thing that is amazing. And obviously when I give it a tug, yes. So, oh yes, let's just do a little, little happy dance for a minute. So, cause I'm gonna make a separate video about that. I'm not going to, go into details of how I rooted this plant, but basically at the moment, at the stage it's in, it's in a cactus and succulent potting mix. And I've just been watering it now like a normal cactus. It lives right under a grow light. I didn't want to, you know, give it too much light, like when it was delicate and not rooted yet. And I thought, bright, bright grow light will be a better way to go. It's brought me a lot of joy. I think it's very unusual. And this year so far, I've definitely been was that a fly? I've definitely been way more into cacti and succulents. Like I wasn't too bothered about them other than right back in the beginning of me getting into plants. But recently as I've discovered more and more unusual ones, I've just found them quite exciting. And it's nice to add things into the collection that are easier to care for. The thing that I think is really magnificent about them as a group is that cacti have such a range of unusual weird flowers. If you're wondering why it got all Grey's Anatomy up in here, I have really bad contact dermatitis with pesticide and unfortunately I found thrips. I thought it was gonna be like a fungus nuts thing at first, I just saw some things. I don't have the best eyesight, can we not tell? And when I went over it was bloody banded palm thrip. I was not very happy about it so I had to treat my indoor greenhouse and I do want to do the rest of the ones that were in that room even though they weren't in the area. So even though it's not wet right now like because I just sprayed it yesterday I, I'm wearing a glove because I already have like a bit irritated hands at the moment and I don't want to get really bad psoriasis on my hands. If you saw my last video and you thought I was not going to show this plant like oh my goodness this is my philodendron el choco red and I am obsessed with this new leaf I don't want to put it next to my face like I did the other day because of the Brabanto. It's such a beautiful new leaf and I had such a struggle journey rehabbing this because this was an import plant. And it's so nice to see it finally thriving and doing really well. It's a beautiful velvety plant. When it's younger, it's got these red backs. It doesn't have red backs as it matures and the leaves are just very dark and velvety. It has bright red caterpillars which is really cool and then the petioles are kind of have this bumpy texture to them. All in all just a fantastic plan and it was this leaf that I couldn't keep my eyes off it. I've been posting updates on the Instagram stories of it just every day. It's so excited and when I finally saw the full and filled leaf I just Oh, my heart skipped a beat. It was, it was love at first sight, was it not? This is a plant I've wanted for so long and for it to be going in the direction growth-wise that I want it to is awesome. And I'm really thinking about putting this plant on my 3D printed moss pole because I just really want the leaves to size up. I also noticed that the nodes seem quite tight so it won't outgrow it as fast as some of my other philodendrons. And again, this is in a chunky mix at the moment. It's super rooted really well. It's got a really healthy root system and it could do with a repot even. I think this month's theme is pretty much me being very appreciative of plants that had a very long, hard journey to get here and I'm going to talk about my Philodendron Florida Ghost, which when I first got it, it was in semi-hydro. It was the first plant I ever had in semi-hydro. It got root rot. It was a disaster. Tried to transfer its soil. It like rotted like three times. It's such a slow grower for me before and it was a disaster. And then it was just like two leaves forever. And then finally, 
it just started really going and it had another big beautiful leaf until yesterday because it got ripped to death but we've got a new growth point and we've still got these three beautiful leaves and i'm just glad that it's not two leaves anymore i love the leaf shape and i'm also really glad that i got more minty leaf i really like this kind of mottly color that they get i really like the original one as well i'm glad that that still managed to stick around on the plant this is obviously called the philodendron florida ghost because it looks like the shape of a ghost it's so cool the leaves usually come out this color and then they go to a green over time or you can get more of a mottled leaf like this it's more of a plant where you don't really know what kind of growth it's going to give you until you just see what happens and it's exciting. This was a super wishlist plant for me for ages and one that will always be until I get one. A massive wishlist plant is the Philodendron Florida Beauty, which is similar but with like Aurea variegation. So stunning. It's not been an easy plant for me, but now I'm glad that she's settled, she's doing better. We need a repot even, we've got some major roots going on and I'm just excited to maybe get this on a pole, see if I can get the leaves to really size up and hopefully not have a rotting situation again for this plant. I've been so cautious in my watering of this plant as well because I know that it's been prone to rot with me in the past. So that sounds really weird, prone to rot with me. So it's in a really chunky aerated mix and I always make sure that if I'm not 100% sure if I watered it recently or not and I'm feeling the soil and I'm like I can't decide then I will leave it and ebb on the, ebb on the side of caution. Is that a saying? Is that a thing people, humans say? I really do think that a lot of things were just mistakes I made early on and then this plant being prone to rot um, and then finally having adjusted a new healthy root system to soil, it's starting to do well. I think that somebody could grow a really, really big, beautiful one of these from small. And if you are that confident person, I think you should get one small because these are still quite pricey when they're really big. When this plant matures, the leaf shaped lobes uh, get more exaggerated and it has a much more pillowy texture from the veins and at the moment i have this in high humidity right under a glow glow light right under a grow light and if you ever have this plant start to revert on you which is when the leaves are just coming out green then you need to give it higher light and that's how you get these really bright white leaves then i've really been loving my philodendron burl marks variegata which is basically, if you've ever seen that there's a normal burl marks and then this is the Oreo variegated version. Something really interesting with this, and it explains a lot of arguments I've seen with people trying to sell Monstera Sport and then people commenting on it saying that it's Albo and then them getting really angry and saying, it's not Albo, it just turns white over time because this exact thing has happened to me. This is one of the original leaves from this clipping and you can see that the yellow has dramatically gone white over time. It's really beautiful. I really like that mixture of colours on here. This was sold to me as a reverted Bill Marks variegata from Jade from Artful Plants and what I did was I clipped it back so that it was just a one leaf clipping of uh, the variegated part. The green reverted part was then just like a normal Bill Marks and I gave that to somebody as a present. And then after that, it started to grow some really beautiful variegated leaves. There were points when I was concerned that the leaf didn't look when it was not unfurled yet. It didn't look like it was gonna be variegated, but then they were every time. And it's just been growing so much. It's got a whole bunch of growth points at the moment. It needs a bit of extra topsoil actually, because I seem to have knocked it out as I do. Put out some knitted ones underneath at the same time as the big ones. This was the most recent one. And it's just a lovely plant. Again, just chunky mix, watering when it's like just moist at the bottom here um, and keeping it in high humidity and it's just been growing really fast and I have a grow light directly above it and yeah it's been doing so well it's so nice to see it becoming a small plant now instead of just being one leaf. Next I have one of the tiniest plants in my collection. This is again from Jade from Artful Plants and it is Hoya Hushkeliana 
and this was a little two leaf clipping. It did nothing, like I've had a lot of things where I've bought very small Hoyas of people, but Hoyas grow so, so slowly. And I don't mind Hoyas staying small, but I would like, I wanted a bit of growth so I could have them in like little small pots on a Hoya wall. Uh, but this one was taking so long. It's probably due to the fact that it's variegated because variegated plants that have any variegation other than blister variegation, which is the silver one, they have their growth slowed because they have less chlorophyll for photosynthesis. But this plant finally, finally in the last month or so, it's put out those three darker leaves there and it's got a new little leaf coming through. I'm so excited. And when the leaves first come through on this plant, they're really pinky, it's so nice. And then they change to the green and yellow color. And if you have a look at what some of these look like when they're really big, it's gonna be really big, beautiful trailing Hoya, I think. And what really attracted me to this Hoya is the leaf shape and look of it, which is very different because I have a lot of the green Hoyas and a lot of the more mainstream ones like the Carnosa Crimson Queen and the Cronayana Black Leaf and stuff like that. But this one just stood out as something a bit different to me. And I really am personally, I'm a fan of plant variegation, so I'm all up for a little variegated Hoya. And at the moment, what have I got this in? What are you in? And I honestly think this was a situation where I just went, right, what do I have? Needs to be chunky, needs some like water to anything. Then I just mixed a bunch of different mixes together and stuck it in there, but it likes it. So, and there's some roots all growing down there. So. Hopefully, oh, can see it. the first root at the bottom. I was very concerned because this plant was in the greenhouse with the thrips, but I didn't find any thrips on this plant. I don't know if I said as well, I didn't actually find thrips on the El Choco. It was just next to stuff that had thrips. So I'm hoping that the El Choco goes undamaged because if anything happens to that beautiful big new leaf, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, I've actually lied because I have one more plant that I want to talk about and I just want to show this guy, this is Terry. He is a tomato, he's a beefsteak tomato. <laughs> and it, Terry's friend is like a bit pathetic, I'm sorry. And I follow so many people on social media that grow like amazing, massive, impressive tomato plants. And next to that, this is like nothing, but it was my first year this year doing any kind of like edible gardening, outdoor gardening. I'm just really proud that I managed to grow him from a seed. Anyway, oh, anyway, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about some of my favorite houseplants. Maybe it made you think about what some of your favorite houseplants were this month. I would love to know if you leave it down in the comments. At the moment, I'm posting shorts every day and long form content on Fridays. So please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, I post daily on Instagram. There's all kinds of planty and educational content on there. And if you guys fancy buying some houseplanty art prints illustrated by both myself and Han, then please head over to our website it's buildyourjungle.com and at the moment we've got a code on so that you can get free shipping in the UK this month and all you have to do is enter free post at the checkout. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, rest of the week, rest of your life and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!